What's up fams, Anis here from All Clouded and today we're going to look at more than 20 of the most common phrases or terms that we use in vaping today. Vaping. Now vaping is a term that we use for when we inhale the vapor that's let off from the heated devices like our e-cigarettes or our mods or any of those type of vaping devices. We just call it vaping like if you ever smoke, smoking, vaping, or vape, it's vaping. E-juice or e-liquid. Now e-juice or e-liquid is pure and simply the liquid or the juice that we buy from the shops and it's what we use and we vaporize it like when you use cigarettes burning the tobacco and in our vapors we're using the juice to vaporize and it carries uh, the flavor and the nicotine and it simply contains our PG and VG which is the main ingredients the VG is thicker and sweeter and it produces a lot more clouds and it's a bit more smoother on the throat and the VG it gives a bit more of a throat hit and it carries the flavor a lot more and then we've got our concentrates in that which are all food grade it's pretty much what's in your lollies and your food it's what it's all made from and then we have our nicotine now this is all by choice you don't have to get nicotine but it's probably the main reason why you're going to come over to vaping is to start on a higher nicotine and work your way down until you feel comfortable and it's a good way to get it from a sensation device Atomizers. Now there's two now there's two types of atomizers we can look at when it comes to our vaping devices, and one is for factory made coils and one's for coils that you make yourself. So the first one we'll look at is this one right here. So if you see down the bottom over there, that pin right there that connects to your positive and the outside one is your negative. Now this is the most common one you're going to be seeing when you start getting into vaping and if you look inside there, that uh, makes the connection, that little pin. Dex. The second one we'd like to look at is what we like to call a deck. Now it's very similar, it's got the positive and negative right there. When you look at the deck, one side's positive, one side's negative and that's pr pretty much simply just the connection when it comes from the battery, positive and negative, you all know how that works. Coils. Now we have two types of coils. We have ones that are made from the factory which are specifically designed for certain tanks. So this one right here, this atomizer, and this coil here, simply comes together like this. and there's your final product. So what happens is the signal comes up positive and it comes right through, positive and negative, comes back, completes the circuit, heats up the wires. Now it's more easy to demonstrate when it comes to making your own on a deck. So a coil like this, it's going to connect a positive and negative post to the atomizer and it's just going to complete the circuit. And it's better seen like this, one's a positive post, one's a negative post, the wire sits in between, completes the circuit. Wicks. Now wicks are simply the cotton that draws the e-juice or the liquid to the coil that it can heat up and it can just vaporize all the juice on it. So on a factory coil, it's just those little things there, the little bits of white cotton in there. And on a coil that you make yourself, you're just going to purchase it and then you're just going to fit it and it's going to sit right in between the wire. Tanks. Now a tank, in other words, is just like a petrol tank on your car and it just stores all the petrol. It's exactly the same when it comes to the e-juice for our vapes. So we had our atomizer. We placed our coil inside. We had our glass. We put the top on and then that's how you can see that it's come up with the name of a tank. RDAs. Now the most common nickname for these drippers because it's a rebuildable dripping atomizer. 
Now these don't have a tank or any type of storage on them, so what we do is we just drip directly onto the cotton and the coil, and that can just give us our bait. Now when it comes to your drippers, you make the coils yourself, or you can buy uh, pre-made ones. They're not the same as a factory-made one. Ones that are a little bit more complex to make, so you can purchase them in packs of 10 or whatever, and by far it's more into the hobby side of vaping. RTAs. Now RTA is just like a tank, except for you don't have a factory-made coil inside. It's a rebuildable tank atomizer, so you build the deck yourself just like a dripper. So you'd have something like this, exactly like a dripper. Your coils to your atomizer, and it will sit inside the tank. That's how you get an RTA. RDTA. Now that one's a bit of a tongue twister. The RDTA is a rebuildable dripping tank atomizer. So it's like a hybrid of RTA and RDA if they both clashed heads bang, there comes its baby or the protege to what they are. So what this has is the dripper on top and it has a tank underneath like a reservoir or a bit of a stash for later. Pure and simply, you just drip when you vape it. And then once it's warm, you just use the wicking slots to feed more juice to the coils. Resistance. Now this is basically the struggle that the battery has pushing through the coil is its resistance. So if it's got a lot more wire, it's going to have a higher resistance, which is just more effort for the battery to push its electrons through the coil and through the wire, which we just call its resistance. And this is measured in ohms. So ohms is basically how we gauge or measure the resistance of our coils. The higher the ohms, the more resistance, the more struggle. The lower the ohms, the less resistance and the less struggle. Sub-ohm. So sub-ohm is basically, if one ohm sat here, it's below it, it's sub it. So it's sub-ohm is that one ohm mark and it sits below it. And uh, once you start getting down to the lower range of the ohm mark, so you say around the point ones, twos, threes, and all that type of stuff, the devices can really produce a lot more cloud and a lot more flavor. Whereas when you're at uh, one ohm or above, it's generally more related to the mouth to lung style pen devices. Mods. So mods is basically the term that we use. It's a very common term. You're going to hear it all the time. And it's the main term that we use when we're describing our vaping devices, our mods. And back in the day, I think people used to have to modify them a lot. And today we'd still modify everything that we have. And that's why we just call them mods. Rig mods. So rig mods basically come in two different forms. So you've got one like this that just, it's plain and simple. It's just got a button to fire. It's got an internal battery, no external batteries, and then this has still got a chip in it, it's still regulated, so nothing's going to go wrong with the device. And then we have different types of reg mods, ones with chips in it that can turn the watts up and down. We can also go temperature control where we can manage basically the heat level that we're vaping at, and there's just a lot more options to do with these devices. Our batteries. So our batteries are going to come in two forms and it's very common these days to have an internal battery, something that you don't pull out, you don't pull the bits, it's just exactly like the term, it's internal, so you just have a charge port there. And then you can have external battery devices and these ones will majority of the time carry 18650s, this is the most common battery. There's a lot other different ones out there but I don't want to confuse anyone, this is mainly the one that you're going to deal with when it comes to your external battery devices. Volts. Now volts is basically the pressure of the charge inside the battery and it's also the driving force for when it pushes through your coils and everything. It's the pressure behind. Um, the higher the volts, the more charge it has. The lower the volts, the lower the pressure. Watts. Now watts is the process that the heat is made which causes the cause to heat up and it releases all the vapor to us. The higher the watts, the more heat. Ma. 
So Ma is a common term, it is the milliamp hour of our batteries and it's what we generally gauge the life of the battery or how long it can last before it needs another charge. Um, there's a lot of technicalities when it comes to it like um, watt hours, blah 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 blah, I don't want to get too much into that. But basically when you check your batteries, they've all got different Mars. So one like this has a 2500 Ma and they can go lower and they can go higher but it's the general gauge that we use when we're looking at our battery's life. Now last but not least, mech mods. So mech mods are unregulated devices and these are definitely for the more advanced users because this requires Ohm's law, calculations, batteries, all that type of stuff so it's more for the advanced level um, by the time you get to that level, you're going to already know all these terms anyway, so I don't really need to touch too much into it, but basically it's an unregulated mod, it's got no chip, it runs simply by mechanics or Ohm's law. And these will come in basically two different forms, they like to call them tubes, which is the most common mech mod, it just basically looks like a little pipe with the atomizer on top. And then the other one is a box mod, and that's a simple box. And then sometimes they can have um, kickers or some form of regulation in them, but a majority of the time, mech mods are just fully unregulated devices, and it is for the advanced users. So don't be silly and go and buy one unless you know what you're on about. So now you know a majority of the terms, you won't be fully lost when you're on the Facebook groups and that. And you basically will have a fair idea of what people are talking about. So if you missed any, just rewind it, go back, check it again. And don't forget fam, like, share, share, subscribe. Hit that notification button so you can see when my next vid's coming out. And like always, keep it cloudy fam.